Right. So, so what we're looking at here is the Behringer, the FCV. Uh, this is mine. This is with the updated firmware, which is actually required for uh, for this thing. So, all right. So what we got here is uh, Brain Spawn Forte. I got a couple scenes queued up here. Um, this is going to be um, the MIDI signals from this are going to go into this program here, and uh, and then it's going to do some things. I'll put, I'll put some audio and whatnot. And then it's going to also send MIDI controls to this program. It's all running on the same computer, by the way. There's just two monitors. Um, this program over here, which is your uh, your venue magic, this controls all the lighting and all the cool stuff. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do here, as you can see, I have this uh, scene called uh, Follow From Fast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this pedal. And when I hit this pedal, a couple things are going to happen. Now I'm going to hit the pedal right now. I hear a click. A metronome started. Also, another thing that started is it's kind of hard to see, uh, but the timeline fall of Rome uh, started. I uh, started playing when I hit the foot switch. Uh, so let me uh, do here. I'm gonna stop the damn cowbell. All right. I'm gonna clear that out. All right, and I'm gonna hit the pedal again. You'll see right when I hit it, the timeline starts. Bam, like that. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this pedal over here. And when I hit this pedal, a couple things are going to happen. Uh, it's going to advance to the next scene. It also stops the metronome if it's playing. Um, you'll notice what it didn't do is it didn't stop the timeline from going, which may or may not be a desired effect. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here then is hit this pedal again, and it's going to start a metronome at a different tempo. And also another thing, it started the timeline for the price of fame, the lighting timeline. Alright, so I'm going to stop that. Uh, okay, it's still going. I'm going to stop it. Okay, I'm just paint the ass here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, alright, let's start off Fall of Rome. Okay. Uh, what the fuck? That was weird. Okay, Fall of Rome's going. Alright, so I'm going to advance to the next scene. That one's still going. I'm going to start it again with the number one pedal. You can see it switched to Price of Fame right when the, tip, right when the uh, metronome started. Alright. Let's take a closer look at this uh, setup. Alright, what I've got here basically on the pedal is just three buttons I'm using. I'm using the one, the four, and the five. The one will start and stop the metronome. Um, and also, if there is no lighting... Or if the if the lighting thing is if the lighting timeline is not running, it'll uh, execute that as well. And then the four and the five buttons will scroll through the pre the uh, scenes on uh, Brain Spawn, the Forte. Uh, so here I'm pressing five to advance. See, those are all just uh, some blank ones I made. Um, then uh, going backward as well. All right. So I'll have to take a closer look at how the different scenes. Uh, create different tempos on the metronome and also uh, queue up different lighting scenes. Uh, let's look at Brain Spawn Forte first. Um, all right. So uh, what we got here going is uh, just a couple modules here. Uh, this is a MIDI metronome, and uh, what that does is that sends. Okay, come on, All right, that sends. Uh, Wherever it gets started up, I can start it through there through MIDI. It's actually it's not it's not sending audio directly. It's sending MIDI to a different module I have up here, which is uh, just a, a drop dead simple. Uh, come on, uh, or, uh, a drop dead simple uh, sampler, a uh, player, and it's just playing this cowbell sample that I loaded up, um, and uh, I can change the pitch and all that good stuff through that sampler. Uh, so. That's how the metronome's going. This uh, this metronome. Oh, what the farce! Okay, there it is. This metronome is uh, set to sync. Where's it at? Yes, host sync. Host sync up with the host forte. So you can see here that the tempos change whenever the scenes change, and that is the key to making different tempos. Um, this other module I have up here is the echo MIDI output. Very little useful deal. And what's that doing is that's sending everything, all the MIDI going into it, to MIDI Yoke 1. Except, 
Well, there's MIDI coming into the module from. Uh, it, can, it can come from any controller. It can even come from. It can even come from the metronome if I really wanted it to. But what I did was I have it mapped to this button here. Also, will start and stop the metronome, but it'll also start something in Forte. But what I did instead of having it just send the signal directly, is that I did a filter or a remap, I guess. Um, I remapped the control change that makes the uh, control pedal, uh, control change 14 is uh, what makes the metronome start on and off. That's what happens when I hit the uh, uh, the one pedal on the, the Behringer. And uh, what's happening here is I'm, instead of uh, mapping that directly to 14, it's, it's kind of hard to read it, but uh, it's remapping that to control channel 0 in Forte. And then if I, that's on this one, if I change the scene, you can see that it's mapping to control one. So basically that is how we will uh, make that one pedal do a whole bunch of different things depending on which scene is queued up. Um, okay, now then over here in Venue Magic, um, basically the timelines are set to queue up on the, off of these buttons here. Um, so I could press the button and it would start and see I can do that. And uh, the reason that these won't play simultaneously is that they are set to um, set to be in the f play only in the foreground and they're both set on foreground one so that if one starts while others playing the, uh, the new one will take over. Okay, um, it's only set to play once but you can have it set to play looped and of course with the, within a timeline you can start new timelines and stuff with the event uh, track. So be very flexible just to do whatever. Um, let's see, levels, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, external control is the key here. Um, this is the Price of Fame button, the second scene. You can see that it is set to trigger on receiving uh, control, cha uh, control change 1. And uh, similarly, the uh, other one is uh, with the Fall of Rome is set to trigger on. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the venue magic is kind of stupid, and it starts at its control change uh, numbering at one, where everything else, including brain spawn, starts at zero. So control change zero actually responds to control change one, uh, and so on and so forth. It's stupid, but it's workable. Um, and so basically, what will happen is that all the timelines you need to queue up for every different song will be. Um, in here, um, you have, of course, different groups and whatever, just basically a different button for each song. And uh, I think another cool thing about this is that um, I don't have it programmed, but if I wanted to, say, while the scene's running, um, like while that's going, um, we could remap, even on a separate, completely separate controller, remap uh, any of these other buttons to change the lighting scene or to run blackouts or to run extra things. Either you can have it either interrupt this current timeline, or you can have it um, uh, interrupt the timeline, or you can have it uh, run uh, concurrently uh, through the background or whatever. Um, but that is pretty much the system, um, kind of a, a crude thing, but uh, it should work, and it's uh, pretty light on the CPU load. You can see it's only using like 10%. I actually also have uh, internet and other windows running in the background too. But, uh, of course, the uh, the timelines aren't too complicated, but you can pretty much do anything you want with the timelines. But that is how uh, we can trigger uh, venue magic scenes uh, and the click all through one computer and uh, MIDI controllers. So, yay, hooray. All right, cool. Good to work.